Welcome viewers to Diabetes Hope channel, the channel where we educate you, motivate you, and encourage you to control your diabetes and probably reverse it. This is the place where you find hope. I am your co-host, Nyambura Malenge, and our host is Wanjiko Dongo. Welcome to the show, Wanjiko Dongo. Thank you, Sarah. Yes, so uh, Molim, what do you have for us today? Dear viewers, Today we start off from where we left last week. Yes. And this is where we were making a cabbage fermentation. True. It is important that we see what happened mm -hmm. or what is the outcome mm -hmm. of our fermentation. We want to know whether we managed to grow the right bacteria. Yes. And this is the lactobacillus bacteria. Mulim, why do we need to introduce good bacteria to our body? Uh, good bacteria mm -hmm. are very important in especially our stomach okay. because they are the ones that help us to digest our food. Okay. So if we want to improve the way that our food is digested, mm -hmm. it then becomes important okay. for us to improve those bacteria. Ah. Now, you see, Sarah, uh -huh. it is possible for us to eat some very good food. Okay. But the fact that you have eaten good food, mm -hmm. and that food is very nutritious, mm -hmm. for example, the raw food, mm -hmm. does not really mean that that food is going to be helpful to us. Okay. It is important that we digest that food, mm -hmm. and that food, once it is well digested, mm -hmm. is what is going to go to the cells, okay. and it is what is going to nourish our cells. Mm -hmm. But but if we have inability to digest, okay. that food is not going to be helpful to us at all. Mm -hmm. And hence the importance mm -hmm. of having the good bacteria. Ah. These bacteria actually determine mm -hmm. how healthy we become okay. because they determine the nutrients mm -hmm. that get to our cells. Ah. Yes. Okay. And what are the signs of an unhealthy gut? Uh, you know, the other time we say that we are trying to respond to a problem. Uh -huh. There are people who say that they are not able to digest these foods. Mm -hmm. Meaning that even when they eat the raw food, mm -hmm. they are not getting help. Mm -hmm. And the reason why they are not getting help is okay. because their gut is unhealthy. Mm -hmm. The environment within their stomach is not helping them to digest the food. Mm -hmm. So for this reason, they are experiencing bloating okay. and they are also experiencing gas. Mm -hmm. There are other individuals that mm -hmm. say that they have irritable bowel syndrome. Okay. And this is also another manifestation mm -hmm. of a gut or a stomach that mm -hmm. is not digesting its food well, okay. a stomach that is unhealthy. Mm -hmm. For other individuals, they mm -hmm. are going to show constipation. constipation is mm -hmm. because the food is not getting well digested. Ah. The food is not getting well digested mm -hmm. because they do not have the digesting bacteria. Mm. And this is why it is so, so important okay. for us to improve our gut bacteria. Okay. Yes. Okay. The other reason as mm -hmm. to why it is important to improve our gut bacteria mm -hmm. is also to be able to improve diversity of these bacteria. Okay. So it is not just one type of bacteria or two types or three types. Mm -hmm. In actual fact, I have read mm -hmm. that we have more bacteria mm -hmm. than the cells of our body. Oh, really? And when I consider how many cells are within our body, yeah. then it is very, very important to understand why it is important to maintain very, very good, diverse bacteria. And the best way to do this mm -hmm. is determined by the food that we eat mm -hmm. and how we are able to digest that food. And what affects the diversity of the bacteria? This is going to be affected by a number of things. Okay. One, our mm -hmm. ability to feed bacteria. Mm. And bacteria eat fiber. Oh. So if we are consistently eating food without fiber, mm -hmm. a lot of those bacteria die. Oh. And therefore the diversity is reduced. Okay. At the same time, mm -hmm. when we take a lot of antibiotics, mm. remember these are antibacteria. Okay. They are actually meant to kill the bad bacteria. Mm. But in the process, they, they kill also them. kill the good bacteria. Okay. So in terms of diversity, mm -hmm. we really, really decrease our diversity mm -hmm. if we are consistently taking a lot of 
uh, antibiotics. Okay. So consistent use of antibiotics is not mm -hmm. something good for us mm -hmm. because it kills the diversity of the bacteria. Okay. So what we need to do mm -hmm. is to be able to grow the right bacteria mm -hmm. and this is what we call the Rhatobacillus bacteria okay. so that it can populate our stomach mm -hmm. and this is going to be very helpful mm -hmm. in the digestion of the food. Okay. Yes. And how do we know that we have grown the right bacteria? Uh, it is not so difficult okay. when we look at our ferment. Mm -hmm. So we do this by observation. Ah. So when we open our fermentation, the mm -hmm. first thing we are going to look to do is to look at it. Okay. How does it look? Mm -hmm. Can we see mold? Ah. We must not see mold. Okay. In a lot of these ferments, mm -hmm. remember we grow bacteria, but also yeast grows. Yes, and also exactly. yeast is good for our body. Mm. So we can accommodate yeast. So when we look at the fermentation and we see a lot of white stuff, mm -hmm. we know that is yeast, okay. that is acceptable. Mm. But we must not see pink things mm -hmm. or we must not see something that is looking moldy. You know the way mold looks yes. like? It's a bit of dark. Mm. So that we must not see. Okay. The other thing we are going to use is mm -hmm. our sense of smell. Ah. How does it smell? Mm -hmm. Is this smell sour or mm -hmm. is it repellent? Mm -hmm. For example, when you talked about the wood your grandmother cooked, mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't sm smell repairing. Yes, it smells, uh, you actually want to drink it. Exactly. Even with that smell, you feel, oh, yes. that smells okay. Exactly, the smell mm -hmm. is okay, it mm -hmm. is just sour, it's mm. not repellent. Ah. So once we feel it's not repellent, mm -hmm. then we know that this ferment is good. Okay. Yeah. So you said it should uh, it should not be moldy. Yes. It should not have a repelling smell. Yes. And it should be sour. It should be sour. Okay. So if you can bring our fermentation, mm -hmm. we can see whether it has actually those characteristics. Okay. And our viewers can also be able to see. Mm -hmm. And then we can know, did we succeed in fermenting our cabbage? Okay. Yeah. So dear viewers, give us a few minutes so that we can get our cabbage fermentation. Dear viewers, we are back. Here we have our fermentation. As you can see, uh, when you open it like this, there are a number of things you can see. For example, you can see a, bar, a bit of whiteness here. Yes. Which to me is okay, mm -hmm. but we need to look inside to see whether it has any mold. Okay. So uh, Sarah is going to inspect it for you. So Sarah, can you see any mold? No. No, there's no mold. There's no mold at all. No, even and on this the is, stone. Yeah, even on the stone. And yeah. this is what we want to achieve. Mm. So I can dip my finger and your clean hands. Yes, my hands are very clean. And then I have to remove this monster of a stone. Oops. Ah, there we are. And Sarah, as you can see, yes, everything is no very mold. clean. No mold, everything is and the clean. smell is not bad. Let's show the viewers. Yeah, yes, yeah, you can see the cabbage is very clean. Yes. And there is no mold at all. Yes. That is what we want to achieve. Mm. So if you are able to get mold, then you know that there's something that went wrong. And oh, uh, the most thing to one. check is your salt. Yeah. There. So the next thing we do is And how come? I thought the water would be completely gone. And uh, funny enough, the water is not completely gone, yes. which is still okay. Mm. So for some cabbages, they're able to reabsorb all of it. Okay. For others, they are not able to. Mm. So now we can remove the cabbage, the outer cabbage, mm -hmm. to see how the cabbages uh, that were cut look like. So there's something that I want our viewers to see how clean the cabbage yes. is. Yes. The cabbage is totally, totally clean. 
meaning that uh, we have managed to grow the right bacteria. Mm -hmm. If it was moldy or looking dark, we'd okay. be very concerned. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so then here we have the fermented cabbage. We can now mix it up with the juices that are still there. Exactly. And this was very, very well packed. As you can see, it's actually strenuous to put a, a spoon inside. Yeah, because so it, was it was very, very well packed. There were no air spaces at all. Mm. So everything looks very, very clean. Viewers. Yes. Everything looks very, very clean. Uh, maybe I should put it in a, a, a plate. Let me put it there. So it is just the cabbage and the onions. Mm -hmm. And the chives. Yeah, the chives. And if you look at this cabbage, it looks like it has been steamed. Yes, it does. So viewers, that is how the cabbage looks like. Mm -hmm. And that is the way it is supposed to look like. Okay. Very clean. It mm -hmm. looks like it is steamed. Mm -hmm. So now it is time for Sarah to smell and tell us whether it has any awful smell, and then she will taste for us. Hmm. Viewers, let's see. So, any awful smell? The, no. No awful smell at all? Yeah. Not at all. It totally smells okay. It's not awful. It's not awful at all. And it the, the smell is also improved by the shades. No mm. onions are really strong. Yeah. So you can't even feel that very strong smell of uh, fermentation. Yeah. What you are now feeling is the oranges. Let's see. So, viewers, have you said your prayers? <laughs> mm. Mm. Yummy. And it's still crunchy. Very crunchy. So if you like it crunchy, you remove it early. Mm. If you want it to get soggy, you can wait for a long time. Okay. But they usually taste better when they are crunchy. Yeah. Wow. I like this. Now, the beauty of fermented vegetables is that they literally move your stomach very fast okay. and you feel it. Within an hour or so, if you are unable to go to the toilet, you mm -hmm. actually feel it coming mm -hmm. because of the effect of the fermentation. Okay. So a number of things, Sarah, mm -hmm. what happens now that we have removed it from here? Okay. Are we going to eat all of it now? I was wondering that. The answer is no. Okay. Uh, what we do is that we can keep this on table. Okay. And it will just keep on fermenting and fermenting and fermenting. Mm, but with the but cloth on still. With the cloth on. Okay. And we have to keep on monitoring so that other bacteria do not grow. Ah. Alternatively, mm -hmm. you can pack this into small packages mm -hmm. and you put it in the fridge. Okay. Do you know in the fridge you can even go for a year? Really? Nothing will happen to it. Mm. So usually what I do, I prefer to put in the fridge. Mm -hmm. So like this, I will just put it into a small container, put it in the fridge. Mm. And every time I want to eat, I just, just remove airy. Mm. So that uh, you know that too cold. it's not too cold. Okay. And you just, you just eat it. And okay. the question is, how do you eat it? One, you can just eat it direct. Mm -hmm. Two, you can add it to your other food. Okay. For example, if you have made your, your soup, you mm -hmm. can just pick a spoon and add to that soup. Okay. But we must not add it when we are cooking. Ah, you only add it, you when, only it's add it when the food is on table. Because okay. we do not want to subject the bacteria to heat. Okay. That is very, very important. Okay. So just add it to your food. Mm -hmm. You can eat as much as you want mm -hmm. or as little as you want. Okay. And you literally feel that your stomach starts to move mm -hmm. and you get a better feeling. Okay. Especially when you eat meat, especially roasted meat. Mm -hmm. This is one of the best things to combine with it okay. because it makes the digestion a lot easier. Yeah, because it can be very tough. It can be very tough. Mm -hmm. And especially if you eat meat for lunch, you eat meat for supper. Like Christmas is coming. I mean, yes, exactly. we plan to do that. Exactly. <laughs> so really, dear viewers, mm -hmm. one of the things you'd really, really hope is that you have started your fermentation. Okay.
unless you have uh, already fermented, you will not achieve this. Maybe you will achieve this for New Year. <laughs> Alternatively, you can go to the supermarket. Mm -hmm. There are some supermarkets that are able to sell this. Mm. And you hope you can get a good one okay. and enjoy. Mm. But this is easy. This is cheap. You can do it at home. Yeah. Nothing complex at all. Mm -hmm. And for those individuals in the raw food uh, diet, diet challenge, challenge. Mm -hmm. we can recommend that once you start your fermentation, mm -hmm. let us see what you're doing. Okay. Once you pack it, let us see the way you've packed it, mm -hmm. if you're not sure. Mm -hmm. uh, be, when you're going to open it, just put uh, put for us a photo. Mm -hmm. Let's see how it looks okay. when you take a photo, so that we can be able to tell you whether it is okay. okay. If you have any questions, you can ask. Mm -hmm. We are simply here for you. Good. Yes. Thank you very much, uh, Molimo. I think we are going to wish the viewers a Merry Christmas. Yes, viewers. <laughs> Merry, Merry, Merry Christmas with a lot of celebration. Yes. But remember, it has to be raw carb. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that is not debatable. It should always be raw carb, raw carb, raw carb. Thank you so much and thank you for your support. If you have not subscribed, Please subscribe, like, share, and comment. Good. Thank you very much, Molimu. Um, I've really enjoyed this. I'm going to make it for New Year's. Because now, uh, not for Christmas, but I'm sure I can carry some of what Molimu has made. <laughs> so, Merry Christmas, and see you in our next episode. God bless you. Have fun, enjoy, but be safe. Thank you. Bye, Bye.